Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I greet you this morning. Thank you so much for joining us uh, at Kingdom Toast or in this program, Kingdom Toast. And I believe that God is going to bless you as we share this toast together in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, this morning, uh, I want to handle the topic on seeking God, seeking God, seeking God. And the first question we are supposed to ask ourselves, why should we seek God? Before you go where you usually go, it is important we learn this lesson. Uh, and we're asking ourselves, why should we seek God? Why should we seek God? When you read uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 2, 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 15, verse 2, you realize there are some eternally unchangeable facts. Eternally unchangeable facts. The Bible says that I will be with you when you are with me. I will be found by you when you seek me. These are eternally unchangeable facts. Anytime you seek God, God will be found by you. It is important for you again to let you know that God is not as common as people think. God is a hiding God. And I can tell you why God is not readily found. Because anything readily found is not valuable. So the scarcity of something gives it value. The more scarce an asset or an object is, the more valuable it is. So God is so valuable. You see, for example, stones are all over. You don't have to seek stones. You don't have to go looking for stones. They are all over. And you, you see that they are not valuable. So our God is so valuable. And for that fact, we have to seek God. Number two reasons why we should seek God is because if you seek him, you will find him or he will be found by you. If you fail to seek him, you will not find him. Number three, if you forsake him, he will forsake you. If you forsake him, he will forsake you. And my dear friends, it is important for you to know that God can forsake you. It is true. He has forsaken people. We know in the Bible, the very first person he forsook, Lucifer, was forsaken. And the third of the angels were forsaken. They didn't want to rely on God. They didn't want to seek God. So what happened is God left them. So Adam and Eve, remember that God was visiting them every evening. God was visiting them at the cool of the day. But when they left him, when they failed, or when they failed to rely on him, what God did, God left them. So we have people like King Saul that God loved them so much. He even gave them an opportunity to be the first king of Israel. But God left them. God left him. He, he rejected him. He refused. He, 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 he denounced him. So God can leave someone. And that's why we should seek God. We should love God all the time. And we should learn to seek the Lord. So then we are supposed to ask ourselves, how are we supposed to seek the Lord? How are we supposed to seek the Lord? Uh, we are relying on uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 15 from verse 1 going downwards. And uh, because of time, I'm not just going to read, but that is the passage I'm relying on. So we are asking ourselves then, how should we seek God? Number one, when Asa was told to seek the Lord, because of what had happened earlier, there are, some of, uh, there are some actions that Asa took. Number one, Asa, uh, I, I, I'm saying this, uh, that when you decide to seek the Lord, Asa, when the angel or when the prophet came to him, the Bible says the first step he took was he took courage. He took courage to seek the Lord. Then number two, the Bible says he removed the detestable idols. There were detestable idols that were planted. There are, there, there are altars that were raised in Israel. So the Bible says when Asa uh, took off, when Asa decided to seek the Lord, he removed all the detestable gods. What are we supposed to learn here? My friends, you know, it is impossible or it is sad or any time you seek the Lord, whereas there are detestable gods, there are detestable idols, 
in your life, God cannot be found by you. So the very first step you're supposed to take, number one, you take courage. Number two, you remove all the detestable idols. Detestable idols could be sin, could be that sacred sin you have, could be unfaithfulness, could be many, many things. Those are detestable gods. And when you see God and you have sacred sins, when you see God and your life is not right with God, it is, it, it, it is not, it becomes so sad and you cannot achieve the intended results. God will not be found by you. So the very first thing you need to do, because we are saying then, why should you seek, seek God? I've, I've, I've answered that question. Then how should you seek God? Number one, I've said it is by taking courage. Number two, it is by removing all the detestable idols from your life. And number three is repairing altars, repairing the altar. You know, when we are talking about repairing altar, because God, an altar is a place of uh, uh, transactions, is a place of spiritual transactions. An altar is where spiritual transactions takes place. So there is a personal altar. There is a personal altar. There is a family altar. There is assembly of God's people altar. Now we begin with our personal altar. When you are seeking God, you have to repair your personal altar. It's like the church of Ephesians. God told this church that you've forsaken your first love. So they are repairing. For them to repair their altar was to go back to their first love. So it could be you've left your first love, the zeal you had. Remember when you received Jesus first as your personal savior? You were so zealous. You could pray day and night. You sought the Lord. You went to church even so early. Look, sometimes maybe today you are going to church around 11 a.m., 12 a.m. You don't care. Yeah? That's a broken altar. You need to repair that, that altar. For you to see God and find him, you need to repair that altar. Repairing of altar uh, of altars well, was a very key thing in Israel. We see even Elijah at Mount Carmel. He repaired the altar. He repaired the altar. Elijah at Mount Carmel, what he began by repairing the altar. That is First King chapter 18 from verse 30. So uh, he repaired the broken uh, altar. So I want to tell you this morning, my dear friends, as I teach you how to seek God uh, and seeking God and the importance of seeking God, you are supposed, first of all, to for you to get the intended result. Repair altars. Take courage. Take away all the detestable, detestable gods. That is what any sin in your life whatever that is not uh, pleasing god in in another words align yourself to god it is very very much important and i believe you will you will actually uh, realize uh, the intended results then we need to to ask ourselves then why should we see god why should we see god uh, number one again why should we see god when you see god and find him he gives you rest on every side he gives you rest on every side the bible says in genesis chapter number uh, probably 24 from verse 1 that abraham god gave abraham rest on every side when you see god when asa the, the passage we are relying on this morning when asa decided to see god god gave him rest on every side when you read that passage you realize that god gave him rest on every side my friend if there is something very much important is rest is rest sometimes uh, you are asking pastor what do you mean by rest on every side sometimes you realize maybe your your business is doing so well but your family has a problem maybe your family you are so loving in that family but your business has a problem you, you see one area is doing fine but the other is not doing fine. When we are talking of rest on every side, we mean family working, business working, your children working, ministry working, everything. God makes sure, make sure that everything is working for you. And the, the, the opposite, my dear friends, is true. When you fail to seek God, the opposite will take place. And there are some of the things I want you again to, to, to see today when you fail to see God. Uh, the Bible says, when you read uh, verse 11 of the same chapter we are relying on today, you find that when you see God, your battles 
will no longer be yours. Your battles turns to be God's battles. Very key to note. But when you fail to seek God, you lose even small battles. Our case, case study today is King Asa. King Asa, when he was seeking the Lord, when he was relying on God, the Bible tells us so well that he defeated with his 580,000 soldiers. He defeated 1.3 million Ethiopian soldiers. Just imagine. Equally, that is probably uh, even less than half. Less than half. So the Bible tells us that when he relied on God, he defeated with only, with only 580,000 uh, soldiers. He defeated 1.3 Ethiopian soldiers. So you see the importance of relying on God. But we see later on in chapter 16 of 1 Chronicles, uh, chapter 16, uh, there downwards, it reached a time he desist from relying on God. He began relying on other kings. He began relying on other people. He began seeking help from other people. When he began doing that, this is the man who was winning big battles. He began even to lose small battles. Small battles. Anytime you fail to rely on God, you lose even battles you could not have lost. We need to be so much careful. Remember this gentleman by the name King Asa fought the Ethiopians, 1.3 million of them. It reached a time he became sick. When he became sick, he had a problem in his foot. It was not a big uh, disease, a problem in his foot. And imagine, the Bible says, even, even so, the disease was severe. He did not rely on God. He relied on physicians. He relied on doctors. And the Bible said, because he failed to rely on God, that foot disease killed him. Just imagine dying of a foot disease. A, a big military fighter, a military fighter, a person who, def who won big battles, began to lose because he failed to rely on God. My dear friends, this morning, I want to challenge you. If there is something important on earth, is relying on God. Listen to me. Relying on God is relying on his unlimited ability. Relying on his unlimited ability. But when you rely on yourself, you, you rely on your limited ability. Your ability is limited. But God's ability is unlimited. So any times you decide to say, you say no, uh, for example, I can give you this example. You see, there are machines that are used, even in the port. There is a machine that is used to, to, to pull those tankers. Yeah? A big machine. You see, when you rely on God, you, you, you become that machine. You enter in that machine. So God is helping you do the business. When you rely on God, God is helping you do the business. You are not doing the business yourself. But when you rely on yourself, it's like going to lift that heavy load by yourself. That is how much dangerous it is when you rely on yourself. The Bible says, uh, we can quote Jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 5. The Bible says, cast is the man who rely on his flesh, who rely on another fellow man. Cast is that man. Anytime you rely on yourself, you are under a, a, a divine curse. And let me tell you, my friend, any other curse, God can sort it out. But a curse from him, no one who can deal with it. So, and the Bible says, when you fail to rely on God, you are under a curse. And the Bible says, you are limited. You are, you are like zone bushes. You are limited. You are like a salty place. You know, you are totally limited. But when you rely on God, the Bible says, you are compared to a tree planted beside the river that stretches its roots in, inside water, inside that river. So it does not depend. It does not depend on, 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 on rain. 
it does not depend on rainy season or whatever it that tree remains green that tree tree remains the best so i want to challenge you my dear listener this morning and my dear viewers if there is something important under the sun is relying on god imagine the bible says in the book of proverbs that the plants of man many are the plants of man but it is god's counsel it is God's plan. It is God's purpose that will stand. So when you rely on your own understanding, you lose. Eh? Because you will have so many plans, but you rely on your own understanding. You rely on, on your own strength. Imagine you have a limited strength. Eh? It's like yeah, the example I gave you. It's like going to lift a very heavy luggage on yourself, on your limited strength. But when you rely on God, when you seek God and rely on his own understanding, I want to tell you, my, my dear friends, people will wonder, look at this gentleman, however weak. It's like David. David could not compare to Goliath at any level. He could not compare. Even the weapons he went with didn't compare to the weapons that this gentleman had. But we see, he did not rely on his weapon. Even when he was given some weapons by King Saul, he said no. You know, he was given some metallic weapons to guard himself. He said no. Because if he could have gone with those weapons, he could have relied on the security of those weapons. But he said no, I will rely on my God. And he went. The Bible says that Goliath came. Goliath came and he began throwing insults to him, saying, look at yourself. You are coming to me with a stone. Do you think I'm a dog? And then David told Goliath, you are coming to me with swords and javelin. But I'm coming to you, not with swords, not with javelin, not with this stone, but I'm coming to you in the name of God, uh, of, of, of the host of Israel, the one you are ridiculing, the one you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are speaking ill about, the one you are mocking. That is the God, the name of God I'm coming with. In other words, I'm not relying on my string. I'm not relying on my stone. I'm not relying on my strength. I'm not relying on my energy. I'm relying on God. And this is my challenge today, my dear friend. Rely on God. Stop relying on yourself. You are not wired to rely on yourself. Animals can. Animals can. They were wired for that. You've never seen. Uh, it's very rare for, 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 an, for, a, for an animal or for a building to fall to a dog or something. It, was, it, it is inbuilt. The, the sensitivity, that sensitivity, it is inbuilt. But for you, you are, you, that gadget was never placed in you. So you are born and you are created. You are wired to rely on God. You better do that, my dear friend. Rely on God. And I believe that God will actually bless you. I want to pray with you. And I believe that God will bless you. Rely on God for that family rely on God. For that business, rely on God. For that ministry, rely on You cannot do it by yourself. When you do by yourself, you'll be defeated. You'll be, you, you'll be defeated completely. So rely on God. And when you rely uh, on God, it will be very easy. It's like that machine lifting that luggage up. You know, people will wonder, look at this weak fella. He is doing marvelous he is doing great things he is doing things that are not cannot measure to him it is because he has learned the secret of relying on god rely on god and you will see great changes in your life and god will bless you in the name of jesus father in the name of jesus i want to pray for my listener and my viewer i decree in the name of jesus that you may release grace upon his life to rely on you forgive them for having left you, for having rejected you, for relying on their own understanding. And from today, give them the grace to begin relying on, on you and they will see great changes for the glory and honor of your name. I honor you, my Father, and I worship your name in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to really thank you for watching this program, Kingdom Toast. May God bless, bless you and have a blessed day today. And I believe that today will be a different day and a good day for you. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you. Watch Kingdom Toast tomorrow and God will continue blessing you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you and God bless you.